we back together again on a Wednesday. That's right. This is Wednesday with Miss B, positive with Miss B, with my special guest, Arthur Chris Allen on Issues of Men. If this is your first time joining me, I am Miss B, positively Miss B, CEO of Storm Talk 365 Radio, faith based podcast network, where we help you to talk to the storms in your life. I'm also the CEO of Storm Radio 24 7, where we talk about arts, business, entertainment, and more. But every Wednesday, 7 p.m. ish, East Coast time ish, <laughs> you can find Chris and I chilling in the seats, just waiting to talk about stuff. I like his dip spot. That's a nice little chair you got right there. I, I want you. one of them. <laughs> uh, I'm going to look to see if I can, I can make that happen for you. Oh man, let me. No, y'all may think I'm. I'm really serious. I've always wanted a, a racing style chair. You know, it it hugs my body, and I can sit back and prop my feet up. And but I like that headrest. I get a little tired sitting up here like this. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is Ms. B. Arthur Chris Allen has an interesting topic for us tonight. I'm really excited about it. And, you know, even as a female, I had to think about that. Am I preparing for my death? Chris, what in the world? What are we going to talk about that for? Uh, it's been some. Um, I've had a previous topic where we talk about um, building our legacy. Um, what does that look like? Um, but the flip side of that, of building your legacy, is are you prepared? Are you preparing for your death? Um, <clears throat> and this topic, uh, and again, thank you, Miss B. Um, this is a this is a topic that was derived from uh, hers truly, Miss B. And when you look from different perspectives, um, many times as human beings, uh, we focus on our material things. Uh, we focus on uh, setting ourselves up um, in this realm, uh, making sure, make, you know, our families are good, making sure we good, making sure our families are good if we can. Um, we put very little focus or no time uh, or give time to everything else except for our spiritual well-being mm. and how it, can, how it can influence our lives while we are here and uh, when we cross over. And listen i was like i've been told you know people are saying what the other side looks like and uh yeah what it consists of and all that stuff like that look i ain't never been there all right i ain't never seen it i know there's something but um you know i truly don't know what it looks like but i will say this um looking at it from a soul or spiritual aspect um I was kind of wondering, you know, did I learn enough, Miss B? Did did I do enough here? Uh, did I put enough away from my spiritual journey, um, you know, to the other side? Um, I don't know. But one of the things I can say, um, there's so many different religions uh, in the world, and there's uh, the comedic teachings, the principles of uh, my, the 42 principles, um, which is, uh, which is considered the world's oldest moral code um, for human conduct, human ethic, um, you know, and influence a lot of people, uh, uh, influence a lot of people on what was right, you know, what was wrong, um, and influence their actions and behaviors. Um, Ms. B, you have Christianity, um, we have the Ten Commandments, um, But you talk about reincarnation. You talk about um, there's paganism, Confucianism, Taoism, Rastafari. There's um, Shintoism, Buddhism, uh, Judaism, Hinduism, Islam. There's all these different um, aspects out here. But are you preparing for your death? Um, so with that being said, Miss B, um, in your opinion. Um, what does that mean? What does that look like for you? Me personally, am I preparing for my death? Yes. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. There was a time that, like everybody else, I was focused on, oh, I got to make money. I got to take care of my kids. I got to do this and I got to do that. And there was a, other times in my life because of 
family relationships, I wanted to be like everybody else because they kept saying I was different and I adopted attitudes and did things that I knew was wrong, but I just wanted to fit in. There was a lot of things that I've done in my 64 years. But as I grow spiritually, I realized, wait a minute, this is not the life that I'm living for. I'm living for my spiritual life. And like you said, we haven't been there or done that, but we know every day that there's a potential for our death to show his face. So what's going to happen to me after I die is now more important than what I'm doing now. And if what happens to me after I die is more important, then I need to handle myself accordingly. What does that mean? No, I'm not going to tell you that, you know, I'm getting it all right. But every day when they have that saying, uh, more of Jesus and less of me, absolutely. Because you know what? I have to answer for me because when I close my eyes on this side of through, when I wake up, I don't want no surprises. You know, in the matrix, there's a blue pill and a red pill. I don't know what pill I'm going to take, but I know one thing. When I wake up on the other side of through in my spiritual life, what I do now determines where I wake up and where I spend it. Now, you don't have to believe in heaven and hell. Some people believe in don't follow the dark light because, you know, that's hell. Don't follow the bright light because you'll wind right back up in the earth. And, you know, there's a lot of beliefs out there. I know what I believe, that death is going to happen to everybody. And I have to make sure that I'm going to do the best that I can to be prepared for what happens to me after this death. It's not all about what, what I'm doing now. You know, I don't want to satisfy the flesh and then the spirit is, is, you know, starving because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. So, yes, every day I'm growing. I'm trying to treat people right. Be mindful of what I say, what I think, what my priorities are, because if I don't put my spiritual life first, then it's not going to remember me when I cross over. And, and listen, I don't, I don't even want to, mm, I don't even want to think about that right now. <laughs> uh, but what I can tell you, um, whatever's going on now in this world, Miss B, and it's been an increase. Um, uh, it's like its own pandemic. Um, a lot of people have really lost their way. Um, not only in this realm, but in taking care of your temple, taking care of your body, um, taking care of, um, of the place that we live, have no regard for it. So I know if you, if you are throwing, you, if there's a trash can set next to you and you throw in cans and, and cigarette buds and things on the ground and, and bottles and stuff like that, I know you have no regard for me. Um, and that's just a simple aspect. Um, you know, you, um, the simple principles. Um, and I think the, uh, seven principles that was, you know, um, uh, seven principles that was, um, that I read with, you know, the principle of, uh, my was, you know, as, um, truth, you have justice, harmony, there's balance, order, reciprocity. And then there's, um, propriety as well. And it seems like all those things have gone off the table for um, a lot of us here. And we're out of balance. And so I think that does have some effect on, um, you know, if you want to talk about, um, I had mentioned a little bit earlier about, um, I mean, I mentioned uh, reincarnation. So based on your acts and your responsibilities here on earth um, that you haven't given to or you haven't taken any care as far as that's concerned um things could be you know again i don't know people had experiences and it's just a consideration of thought um so you look at who you might come back as if you have that other opportunity you know will you be a grain of sand Will you be water? Will you be an insect? Uh, will you be a plant, a flower, a person? Um, will you be dirt? Hey, um, you come back as a human being or a humanoid. Um, you know, what will you be? Will your life be great? Would it be grand? Um, would it be, you know, will you be a slave in the next life or whatever that may be? Um, it also has an influence on what what realm that you go into. Um, so then, you know, 
you know, we have something like that. That's it, it's beside your earth responsibilities. That's very serious to me. And the older I get, just the more I think about it. Um, you know, even, you know, what your personality is going to look like on, on the next side, things of that nature. So, um, however, when I got here, I've always been a humanitarian. I've been trying to be a nice person and, and be caring of um, where I live and what I do in it. Um, that has gotten away from me at some point in my 20s. But, you know, outside of that, you know, I've been back on track and learning and growing um, as I should. Um, so, Miss B, what do you think about um, when we talk about preparing for your death? You talk about a divine judgment. You know, I'm laughing. That one on that paper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Divine judgment. Mm -hmm. So you can make me go church on you. <laughs> no, seriously, uh, this uh, episode of Issues with Men is very important because, you know, all of his previous episodes has been dealing with relationships. And so now we're talking about your spiritual relationship. Um, and what does it mean about divine judgment? Well, as he mentioned before, there's so many paths you can take for your belief system. And for me and my studying, they all have uh, something in common. They are not all totally wrong. It just depends on how open you are to your spiritual relationship and the spirit realm and the fact that we were created by a spirit to love the spirit, obey the spirit, return to spirit and make disciples of others for the spirit. Why do I keep saying that? Because we are spirit beings having a human experience, but society has led us to believe that we're humans trying to find our way spiritually. If you understand that that's backwards, Everything should be looked at through a spiritual realm, through your spiritual eyes. And again, I can't tell you what to believe or what not to believe. I personally am blessed to be a follower of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe Jehovah God, our father, you know, created us. And I believe our first parents were black. But that being said, divine judgment, like they say, and I'm going to be honest with you, they say karma is a beat. Divine judgment, what goes around comes around. Divine judgment, what you sow, you shall reap. And in the harvest time, is it going to be plenty or scarce? Mm. Divine judgment does not necessarily mean that you are freaking out because there's some spooky being in the heavens watching over you. Yes, that's true. But divine judgment starts with your life, the choices you make. And the consequences that you create that you're going to have to answer to. Sometimes you write those checks and you don't want to have to cash them because your choices have created situations and circumstances that you don't have to deal with. Divine judgment starts with you. And when you look in the mirror, what are you seeing? Are you judging yourself? Do you see in reality who you are? Do you see who other people see you as? What are you doing? When I do my podcast, I'm going to get back to that. But I use character traits. Every morning, I will come on with a different character trait. What are your character traits? You are a choice. Your personality is a choice. Your behavior is a choice. Regardless of the spiritual influence, you have a choice. Divine judgment starts with you. Who are you spiritually? Accepting that you are not all out here by yourself, that we're accountable to each other. Divine judgment starts with you. Who are you, where you wanna go? And are you living as if you know you're gonna die, but you have no idea how you're gonna wake up, where you're gonna wake up? And like he said, who are you gonna wake up to be? Reincarnation. Oh, don't talk about that when it comes to mainstream religion because they'll be like, oh, there they go with that off stream stuff. No, there they go with stuff that you don't want to accept that it's a reality. If you really understood who we are, spirit beings don't die. Okay, so let me just say this again. If we are spirit beings having a human experience and when we die in the flesh, we waking up somewhere spiritually. And whether that means right back here with the matrix, I don't know whether that means that's up in somewhere in oblivious that they call heaven. I don't know. But I know the galaxy is vast and it's full of other existing living entities that most people don't want to believe in. But divine judgment 
people starts with you looking inside of you, deciding that you have a spiritual responsibility to be the best person you can be because of the person or creation that created you is expecting that of you. Now, Ms. B, you know what I thought was fascinating in a lot of um, religions, a lot of ancient texts, you know, they talk about um, thought, how powerful thought the consciousness is. Um, your emotions. Um, and they also, you know, it talks about your heart. Um, uh, I know one of the principles of my eye talk about the heart and weighing that against a feather. That, I mean, it's like, to me, I was like, that says a lot. And I don't think us being here uh, living in the earth realm because of so many different reasons and different things of that nature where that would balance out. It would take a truly strong, a truly um, experienced, a person full of wisdom and understanding um, to be able to carry that out. Now, where I was going with this is, um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, that I think have a serious consequence on the heart, our mindset and our emotions and our behaviors and why we might not be able to uh, obtain or reach that balance that we're looking for. Um, one, this first question is, um, are you anger quickly and become violent? Oh. Absolutely right. That is a question that we all need to answer. For me, do I anger quickly? Do I become violent? I don't anger quickly, but I have angered. Have I become violent? Yes, I have. And why is that a good question to ask? Because, you know, when you think about the spirit realm and your responsibilities, um, Satan is real. You don't want to believe it. But every time you do something negative, you give him energy. You give negativity energy through your negative behavior. So there's a scripture that says, slow to speak, slow to anger, but quick to listen. Now, for those of you who are listening, and for me personally, I have to say, I back it up. Kim, and my, Kim is my best friend. I've learned how to say, keep it moving. I've learned how to shut my mouth up. I've learned how to just say, it's not worth it. So if you are out there struggling with an anger issue, and then you want to lash out and be violent. Let's just talk about, you know, the violence that's going on. It's always been going on. But now that we have the Internet, people can just see it more. But if you're experiencing where everything sets you off, everything. And then you want to lash out at people and actually become physically violent. Let me tell you th something. There's a why behind your what. What is your why? If you don't understand the why, then you don't understand that, that there's a spiritual influence out there. And if you don't have enough positivity to back off, you're going to constantly be angry and be set off and hurt somebody, including yourself. So for me personally, been there, done that, don't want to do it anymore because I'm going to have to answer. Remember, we answer for everything we do, either positively or negatively. And somewhere is getting energy from our decision. So if I want to be angry and evil and violent, then it's going to feed off of me and it's going to feed into me even more. And sometimes it gets to the point where you can't pull back because you don't, you, you've exhausted all of your energy being negative. So that's a very, very good question. Where are you going to wind up when you finish on this side of the through? Depends on how angry and violent you've been. Wow. Well, and just in my experience, um, being in the places I've been, um, when you are a, when you're quick to anger and you're violent, you're, it's almost as if you're driving in a vehicle in traffic at a hundred plus miles an hour. Eventually you're going to hit something that somebody's going to hit you. And, and you know, that's going to be it. So you have to, at some point, um, 
and we're gonna, and we're gonna get into this a little bit later. I'm not gonna give you what the reasons are now, but you there again, there has to be balance. You have to learn um, how, to, how to be able to counteract that um, or get better Absolutely. in that type of behavior because prom, I promise you, I've seen it too many times. I had to do it myself personally and not to get angered quickly or jump to violence. It's something that this world taught me to do. I wasn't raised like that. I wasn't naturally like that, but that's what was taught to me in this world. And I had to learn personally myself that, okay, I got to back off this because this is not where I want to go. And while you're here, the consequences of, uh, of that, there's also consequences on the other side. Now, um, the second question I wanted to ask you, Ms. B and the viewers is how trustworthy are you in relationships in general? Wow. I'm going to answer that question. We've come back from a short commercial. Hold on. All right. everybody thank you so much for joining me if you just you coming on that's all right you just saw a short commercial about our sunday lineup at storm radio uh storm truck 365 radio.com please consider joining us on sundays we have a lineup and uh, as i enter into uh, going into my fifth year there are other programs that are coming so that's at www.stormtalk365 radio.com where our feature uh podcast is from um Cheryl underwood she sends me two or three hours of interviews and gospel music every sunday that you can hear right here on Storm Talk 365. Before the break, Arthur was talking, not Arthur, I call him my Arthur, but Chris was talking about, um, you know, we're talking about are you preparing for your death? And the first question that he asked me was about my behavior when it came to being angry and being valid. And I said, you know, I'm working on it every day, but we're going to have to answer to how we behave. It's a choice. And then he asked me a second question. What was that second question, Chris? And the second question was, how trustworthy are you in relationships in general? You know, um, I really thought about that when it comes to men and women and, you know, are you upfront with people, uh, telling them what you expect from the relationship or what you plan to give? But in all honesty, it's about everything. Are you trustworthy in everything? I, I think for me, um, it bothers me. As a child, it would bother me when I did something wrong. When you have a spiritual um, awareness, it starts bothering. I remember watching Joyce Meyer, and she said it had got to the point where if um, she knocked a clothes hanger down at Walmart, she had to go back and pick it up because it just eats at you. It just mm -hmm. eats at you. So how trustworthy are you? Let me tell you, when it comes to me, um, I'm not perfect, and I'm sure somebody could probably say, they haven't had any issues with me being trustworthy. But for me, that's very important because, listen, if you lie, you'll do everything else. If you lie, you would steal from your uncle. You would rape somebody. You know, being trustworthy has a lot to do with your character traits. Can you be trusted to do the right thing? Uh, and for me, I'm too scared not to. I'm be honest with you. No, I'm not perfect. I haven't been perfect. But the more I become aware of who I am spiritually, I'm scared. I mean, to the point where, Lord Jesus, I, I don't have to answer to you for nothing. So if it eats at me, if I get a hip of my spirit, I go back and fix it or I keep my mouth shut. But let me tell you something. Yes, I'm working on being trustworthy, not only um, with other people, but Jehovah God, my father has trusted me with people such as yourself. If he trusts me with people such as yourself to come on this network to share your message, Failure is not an option. You see what I'm saying? If Absolutely. he trusts me, who am I not to trust me? 
I got to believe in myself the same way he believes in me. And if he believes in me, then I got to watch what I do because you're worried about the eye in the sky from all the cameras and humans. I, I'm worried about the, that spiritual eye, that, that all knowing eye that's like, okay, I heard you, I saw you, and I hear what you're thinking. Yeah, he hears what I be thinking. Man, sometimes it be going over my head and the Holy Spirit be like, oh, really? And I'm like, oh, Lord, what did I just say? Didn't even open my mouth. So, yes. I am working on that every day. I don't want to be held accountable for anything. I ain't stealing. I ain't lying. I don't do none of that. Just like we were talking about in the green room. You know, people say, Miss B, you need to be charging. Well, you know what? I trust people to come on my network to know that I have a service to offer. And if they don't feel the value in it to, to sow a seed, that's on them. But I trust them to do the right thing. And that's up to them. But I'm going to always make sure that, you know, the broadcasts are going to go on and then and, and the internet is on. I'm going to make sure I'm going to do what I got to do. So people trust me to make sure that I do what I have to do to make sure their messages are across. So, yeah, I'm working on that trust thing. Um. No matter, I would tell you this for myself, because I know I know that I'm human. Sometimes certain things come across my mind, but I also know that in my experience, I know that if I pursue it, just cross my mind sometimes, there's a consequence for that. You better say it. <laughs> you, you know, you, you're definitely gonna pay for it at some point. You don't know how or when, how it's coming, but it's coming. And I'm like, okay, I'm tired of this, you know, um, I'm done with that. And I, you know, again, I, I've said, I've said in past, uh, past episodes of issues of men, I got tired of, you know, not having, um, luck. I'm not even going to say luck, but when things happened to me, I was punished or penalized many times harder than another person who did the same thing. When people said something to me and I responded back to them in a negative way, um, I bit my tongue uh, or something happened in my process of me getting out what I was saying to that person. That was just already letting me know that, <laughs> that the source was like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Because it already knows me. It already knows what's going to happen. If I keep if I keep on this path, if I keep saying what I'm saying, they already know, like, shut it up. Shh, shh. And that's what I had to learn. Some things, you know, I would rather talk about it and vent and get it out in that capacity than give it to somebody else because what you put out comes back. Mm. Um, the third question, um, Miss B and the viewers, are you preoccupied with deviant sexual behaviors? Well, I know I'm not, but let me tell you, there's someone that's very close to me that had an issue with watching porn videos. And then this may be, not be considered deviant, but, you know, there are people in my family with same sex relationships. Some people say it's deviant. Some say it's normal. It doesn't matter. But whatever your sexual preoccupations are, I believe that if it causes harm, to others, it's wrong. But I give you the option to decide what's right or wrong for you in your life. Society has put upon us what they consider to be right or wrong. If you're not biblically based or scripturally based and you don't understand that there may or may not be some sexual requirements in order to be pleasing to um, your creator, then that's up to you. But if you are constantly going to the X-rated channels on YouTube or going to rent DVDs or whatever it is, and if you're constantly, you know, drooling at the mouth at young children or whatever your attraction is, that's out of order. And again, you may or may not believe it has anything to do with where you wind up spiritually after you finish with this human life. But what if, what if what you're doing is not pleasing and acceptable to gain you entrance 
into a level of peace in the spirit realm when you leave your human existence? What if? Is it worth satisfying the flesh and killing your opportunities to live in peace in the spirit realm hereafter? You know, we look at a lot of the sci-fi movies and a lot of the futuristic movies, but what if they're just telling us what our future is holding for us? What if? So for me, no, I'm not preoccupied with win anything. You know, I'd be like, Lord, I ain't had sex in a week. That's all right with me. So I ain't preoccupied with nothing. I love me some honey bunny, but you know, it's not an issue with me. You understand what I'm saying? But if you are constantly thinking about sex, constantly wanting sex, constantly wanting to have sex that's unauthorized. In other words, you like taking it, whether it's from a child or elderly person, uh, you may want to consider, is this going to, hinder me when I die in the flesh from waking up in a pleasant spiritual realm? I'm just saying. And Ms. B, I just always say um, I always look at things like this. If you do anything in your life that you don't want to be known in the public mm -hmm. you want, that you don't want anybody else to know just don't do it. That's your sign right there. Hick up. <laughs> yeah. Back up. Just think about it. Back up like, mm, I don't know if I want to do that. But I think like so many people have gotten so comfortable with the expression bad is good that um, they might not feel, um, they might not look at or perceive anything as being bad anymore. It, this, what it is is what it is. And, I'm going to, I'm going to feel, I'm going to enjoy it, whatever for right here, right now. But like you said, if it does have a penalty or a consequence against you, um, when you transition over, um, that's an issue. I just think anything, for, um, I've been in the place for many years where I didn't have to be guard for anybody. Else. I didn't care. It's all about me. But in that process too, there was still something inside of me. It wasn't as um, pronounced or it wasn't on the surface. It wasn't like on my skin. I didn't carry it on my skin like I did uh, in my younger years where um, I'm gonna call it um, intuition, discernment or whatever it was kept me out of a lot of trouble until I decided to ignore it. So even if you're feeling uncomfortable or some kind of way dealing with somebody or um, putting yourself in a place where you'd be like, I really don't want to do this, but I don't want to disappoint somebody or whatever. You have to think, you still have to think about yourself and think about, is there a consequence for doing this um, on many different aspects of your life? Um, so the next question, Miss um, B and the viewers is, um, do you have hatred and an unforgiving issue towards others. You know, I, I have to say I'm working on it because every now and then I get a trigger and realize if you were over it, it wouldn't still upset you. Mm. And that's some serious stuff because the scriptures that I read said you must forgive in order to be forgiven. And when there's something that's in the back of my mind and I thought I'm over it and then all of a sudden a spoken word or a thought and then I get angry all over again, I ain't forgave. Hmm. So, you know, I was thinking about that. Would it now, would it be possible for us to forgive, but we're still having responses to it because we, we may feel disappointed or hurt or... Look, you can't skirt around it. Either you done forgave them and move on or you haven't. That's the bottom line. Ain't no, but what if, ain't no grant. Either you have forgiven them or you haven't. When a dog comes and they bite you, either you forgive them or you don't. If you get forgive them, you're going to still play with them. If you don't forgive them, you're like, I remember you bit me, bit me the last time. Now I ain't messing with you. Which is it? You forgive them or you haven't. If people bite you in the butt, and you still feeling the pain and you treat them different, you haven't forgiven them. See, people get that twisted. Oh, I can forgive you, but I ain't gonna never forget. Then you ain't forgiven. Move on, make him your best friend, keep it moving. 
when I can go, and I'm being very honest with you, when I can go to my children's biological father and hug him and kiss him and ask them, how's he doing? That I know it's a done deal. But when people that have recently done something to me and, I, and, and it hurt, every now and I get triggered and I snap. I'm working on it every day, but hurt is real. But guess what that hurt is? It's a choice. It's a choice. Either I choose to let this stuff go or I don't. Ain't no such thing as but what they did. Okay, no, it's not what they did. It's your response to it. How are you responding to it? Either you have forgiven that puppy for biting you and you're going to go back and play or you're going to stand up and say, I remember your little bad thing. You you bit me. I ain't going to touch you. No, I don't trust you with them little bit of little teeth. It's no gray area. Either you forgive or you don't. That's just my feeling. But who am I? You know, I, I always said to Miss B, I was like, if you um, if you let go of something, it'll let go of you. And like you can't keep holding hands with somebody, you know, uh, you can't hold hands with somebody that you're not holding hands with. It's it's just that simple. It uh, again, it's a choice. Um, and sometimes, even in that choice, sometimes you have to move through. Um, you, you can't just have it sit on you and marinate and and and, and uh, quote unquote um, consume you or eat you alive. Because again, you'll never reach that place where your heart is as light as a feather. You never reach that place where your mindset is free and clear. You're not looking over your shoulder or um, wondering or thinking, oh, that person is going to do that to me. Um, those type of things. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to um, answer or ask my fifth question this evening to Miss B and the viewers. Are you likely, uh, so are you living like you are taking your death seriously? I am I can't say a hundred percent. I would say no, that's that's wrong. I've been improving on this every day, put it that way. Um, I've been learning from my experiences and different things that I'm, you know, um, and reading more, ex expanding my knowledge and um just trying to improve and do um what's best for me every day and in that process try not to cause harm or be hurtful to somebody else in the process um that's how i answered that question miss b you know that came from a video that i've done before um are you living like you're taking your death seriously you know I'm not even going to just talk about me because I usually say I don't feed you anything. I don't eat. We're right around 20 minutes left. I'm not going to hold you long, but let me just say this. The Lord woke me up and gave me this. It says, live like you believe what you believe, but know what you believe. If not, study and apply it. Otherwise, you'll fall for anything. Now, I want to take this time to really talk to all of you out here, whether you're on a podcast or viewing this as a video. Everybody is focused on living for today. I got to enjoy my life. I got to be me. I'm not going to let anybody hurt me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. It's all about me, me, I, I, I. Well, if it was really about you, then are you living like you believe what you believe? Maybe you are, but what are you believing? Do you believe it's okay to treat anybody any kind of way? Do you believe it's okay to be selfish and to be all about you? What is it that you believe in? Do you believe there, there's something higher out there that you have to answer to? Are you living like you believe what you believe? If not, are you willing to study instead of just taking from the pulpit to parking lot? And now you got the videos and all of this other stuff. Oh, they said it. They must know. No, they're human just like everybody else. All it takes is one word to change the dynamics of a sentence. All it takes is one scripture that's quoted wrong to change the dynamic of the meaning. Mm -hmm. You have to study for yourself. The Lord said, live like you believe what you believe, but know what you believe. If not, study it, then apply it.
I've been studying. Let me tell you something. I've been studying the spirit realm. The matrix got my attention. It really did. Because in reality, the Bible says, call out those things as though they were. Neo had issues. He was like, what in the world is going on? If you haven't seen the Matrix trilogy, you may want to think about looking at it. Mm -hmm. Also, the book of Eli. You may want to think about looking at that. What am I saying? I'm saying the spirit realm is real. And no relationship here on earth is worth me sacrificing my spiritual relationship and my spiritual existence after this existence is over. I had to learn that because for a long time, it was all about getting love from other people. I love them. Why don't they love me back? But Jesus said, I love you. Are you loving me back? What are you doing to understand who you are, why you were created, and where you're going to go in the afterlife? Are you so afraid to study for yourself to find out that maybe everything from the pulpit to the parking lot ain't all it seems? Do you understand the Vatican has vast knowledge that they have not revealed to us, but the internet is making it wide open? Are you aware that there's a possibility? No, it isn't. Are you aware that we're not the only living creatures on earth that exist in the universe? There are a lot of things that you need to study for yourself and then say, Am I living my life preparing myself for the death that's coming? And where am I going to wind up? Is there a life after? Am I going to come back as a dog? Am I going to come back at all? Am I going to be locked into oblivion because I have not lived a right life? What if there are things out there that you need to study to secure your spiritual existence after your human existence is over? The answer to your question, Chris, I'm too scared not to. Oh, listen, now you answer my question and more. And to kind of summarize what we talked about today, um, you know, what do we do to have to maximize our possibilities of increasing our chances of um, reducing our divine judgment or preparing uh, for your death? Um, again, it's always great whether you accept it immediately or accept it later, but it's always great to look in the mirror. Um, years ago, I didn't like who I, I didn't like who I saw in the mirror. I didn't like who was looking back at me. So I had to make a change. I had to start making changes. It didn't happen overnight, but I was aware and being consciously aware of it um, put me on that path to um, loving myself. Um, Taking care, taking care of my temple, taking care of my soul a little better, protecting my heart a little better, um, protecting your spirit a little better. Um, and again, when I say look in the mirror, even when you talk about healing from your trauma or your pains in your life, um, having that forgiveness of um, someone else uh, before doing those things to you, you, you definitely have to work on that and do that. It's not, again, it's not gonna happen overnight but it's something that you must do. Um, what life has also taught me, Miss B, uh, viewers, is I had to change my perspective on life. I just remember when I was a little kid, no matter what happened, I, I just had this positive and this great outlook on life. Um, but as I got older and kept experiencing this cycle of um, hurt and pain and disappointment and um, hurt fears and anything else that you could probably think of um it caused me to change my perspective when i changed my perspective it changed my experience absolutely say um, that again say it again <laughs> seriously i know i was like when my perspective changed it changed my experience uh, come on now I, I got to tag feeling. team you on that. Let me let me tag yeah. team you. And then you keep going. Look, I, you, okay. there you go. You have to experience to expose. Let me say it again. You have to mm. experience to expose. Your experiences expose who you are spiritually, emotionally. Your experiences shows your strengths or your weaknesses. You have to experience to expose what you believe in, who you believe in. You have to experience to expose the blessings of the Father or the curses of the spirit realm. You have to experience to expose life. 
Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, uh, Miss B, in learning and growing every day, I stopped caring about, worrying about what somebody else is going to think about me. That's a major component to, um, you know, your growth and walking in your truth and your existence. It don't matter what anybody else feels or think, but you have to deal with yourself every day. Mm. You have to deal with yourself every day. So um, by making my path clear of little clutter and things that I put out there for myself, I'm tripping over my own logs, <laughs> my own rocks. <laughs> I had to remove those in order for me to be able to walk and, you know, run and jump and, and live my life a little better. Um, that also includes, you know, like I said, responding to people, responding, um, fight or flight. I would say I, right now, I only would fight to defend uh, my wife, my family, my kids or something in that nature. But I'm not going to bring that to somebody just because I'm angry or you made me upset. I didn't like what you said and things of that nature. Um, that's, that's not, I'm definitely not, I'm not, I'm not, that's, I'm not, I'm not doing that. It has to be something so serious. Um, but other than that, I'm not doing that. Um, I always thought, you know, we talk about love thy neighbor, um, treating others with respect and dignity. And Ms. B, I got so tired of turning my cheek turning my cheek okay now but which part do you want to kick the day i think that's what bothered me the most um is that people take the opportunity instead of meeting you halfway to where you are and be like you know what yeah you're right you know that was wrong i should have said that i should have done whatever If you don't meet them where they are in that negative space, um, nine times out of 10, they're gonna go all the way. They're gonna take that whole hundred. And I was like, okay, I'm, 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 I can't do that no more. I'm not doing that no more with, with people, period. Um, it must be, you know what I thought was very important. Um, and this goes back to everything I said, just controlling your thoughts and your emotions. Like I think of things sometimes. Do I have to do it? No. Um, is it going to come to fruition? Not all the time. But you have to be careful uh, what you set out there and your intent and your purpose and your thoughts and your emotions and what you say. Um, so with that being said, um, is that anything that I possibly have missed that I didn't touch on that you thought was pertinent? No, because if I keep talking, we're going to be here for another hour. But I am just excited <laughs> that you exposed that. I do want to say that this is issues of men. And one of the things that we want to bring to light is that as men and as women, we have to be responsible for who we are and how we treat others because the consequences are waiting for us, either on this side or the other side. Be mindful, it's not all about you and living now, it's about your existence for later. That's my closing. Absolutely, definitely thank you uh, for your final thought this evening. Um, and that was also an encouraging word. So with that being said, um, for those who would uh, <clears throat> like to learn more about author Chris Allen, go to www authorchrisallen.com um, and there you will find um, books um, there uh, open wounds um, adult and youth edition you will also find um, a guide to open wounds which gives you a discussion topic um, in regards to things uh, that were written in the book uh, that you can uh, you know pretty much have a nice little class and um, talk to adults and youth about so um, with that being said, oh, also coming soon, the issues of men apparel. Uh, definitely did want to mention to say that. We've been working on that in the process of doing those things. So uh, that's something else that's going to be out there. Um, and again, Miss B and those who uh, support me and push me, thank you uh, for, you know, just keeping me in a positive path and, and building and growing my brand. Thank you.
<laughs> you got me all googly. <laughs> all right, everybody. This must be with Chris Allen every Wednesday, 7 p.m. with a different topic. We pray that you took this topic and really decide to think about it. Are you living and preparing for your death? Because it's going to happen. What you do now will determine where you wind up later. So again, find us here every Wednesday, 7 p.m. East Coast time with a new topic. And also you can find us at www.stormtalk365 redjoe.com. All right, Chris. Night-night. Good night. Y'all take care. Peace. <laughs>